guys. Today I am revealing your hotel secrets. I've been wanting to do this theme for a while now because I just know it's gonna be good. <laughs> and by good, I mean dirty. I wish that I was in a hotel right now to really lean into the theme, but alas, I am home. Just pretend there's like a very sterile white bed behind me with a towel swan on it. And then a, a generic black and white photo of a tree right above it, a bottle of water, but make it six dollars. Do you feel like we're in a hotel room now? I do. I've set the mood, so now let's f Just kidding. Let's read stories about you guys f I can only assume. This is not much of a secret to me, but I know my grandma wouldn't want me to share this. But LMAO, here we are. Somehow it makes it better that somebody else doesn't want you to share. I feel like me and you are a bit misbehaving right now together. We had a family trip to California. Grandma was included, as she should be. At the brink of death, your grandma should be invited to everything. And we finally arrived at our hotel after a long day. We were in the lobby and we told my grandma to use the bathroom and she insisted she she was fine. As we are in the elevator on our way to the hotel room, my grandma realized that she really had to poop. She started yelling, we need to get there faster. Did you like my gra- We are now running to the hotel room and I have never seen Grammy have such a pep in the step. When I tell you she exploded the bathroom like we had to sit on the balcony because of one step in the hotel room and you were basically dead from the fumes. However, my dad and I really had to pee so we decided to leave and go to the lobby. I sprinted through the nastiest smell of my life and made it to the hallway. As we were walking to the elevator, I see something on the floor. As I approach it, I realize it's a large turd that my grandma left in the hallway as she was running to the bathroom. Yes, I'll say it again. There was shit in the hallway. How it slipped out of her underwear amazes me. See that? That's where I'm a little sussed out by the story, a little confused, a little doubtful of the validity of the story. Poop doesn't just slip down a pair of pants. But I don't know, granny panties, are those looser? I'm not really sure how that works. We made her pick it up after she was done. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. That is cruel. You made your dying, I mean, you know, we're all dying. She's like really dying. You made, you made your dying grandma pick up her poop after practically shitting herself. No, you didn't. In the bathroom, took a while. She took the walk of shame and picked her shit up. Her shit she left in the hallway. I don't believe this story. And if it's true, you suck. You're a terrible grandkid. Your dad's a terrible son. We should all be picking up, just like our pets, the poop of our elders, you know? What happened to respecting our elders? Pick up their shit, period. <laughs> Does this upset you guys too? Like, if this story is real, don't you think they should have picked up the poop? Can she even lean down? You know what I mean? Like, you got this woman's hunched up. That's it. Elderly abuse. Sorry, I don't know if that's offensive because like it's a real problem, elderly abuse. But to me, this is bordering. So one day I decided to have a sleepover at a hotel with a few of my friends. We were bored and decided to make a fake Tinder and we used some random girls pictures that we found on Instagram. Anyways, after swiping for a bit, we came across someone very familiar. Turns out it was one of my teachers from freshman year and we ended up matching. He then sends a message asking if I play Fortnite. Weird, right? Very weird. I say no and he continues to say, I don't either. I just like foreplay at night. I am now traumatized to say the least. Oh my God. And you know they copy and pasted that same question to every single person. That pickup line sent me straight to Dusty Depot. Is that what it's called? Dusty Depot? My vagina's at Dusty Depot. Anyways, I wonder if you match with someone in which you do not want to engage in a romantic way, is it better that their pickup line is smooth or not smooth? You know, like which one's cringier? This was pretty bad. <laughs> All right, I'm a cosplayer. I've been cosplaying for about three years, but I have this one story that I will probably never forget because it's so weird. One time I was at con with my friends. It was a week long and one day we went separately around the hall. I was in the bathroom and there were other cosplayers hanging out and talking and out of nowhere a random person kissed me when I got out of the stall. Stay with me here. I am fully with you. You just got assaulted. I'm not going anywhere, okay? I ran out of the room not seeing the person's face and when I got back out, one of my friends was out there and I told her what happened and she said that one of my friends that we were with was in there. My best friend kissed me at a con. I like that you, you call it a con. Like it's, everybody knows what it is. It's a 
con, I, but we all do, so it's fine. It gets worse from there. Isn't it a, like better that you knew them? I don't know. When we all got back to the hotel, we were taking off our makeup and outfits, and while I was taking off my pads, they hugged me from behind. Yeah, so long story short, I dated my best friend at a con. I feel like everything you just explained just does not equal dating. And you're you're not really making a good <laughs> image of a cosplayer. So like, to me, I read this and I'm like, oh, a cosplayer's definition of dating is a quick assault and a hug from behind dating. That's not the same thing. Also, I didn't make fun of you during the story, but you, friend, I before E. Except after C. F-R-I-E-N-D. I just had this, I'm sorry. So. I went on this trip a couple years ago and my family went to see my aunt and cousins that lived in a different state and I hadn't seen my cousins since we were toddlers so it was kind of a family reunion-ish and I saw my one cousin, let's call him Dylan, and I don't know why I thought he was kind of cute which made me low-key disgusted with myself but throughout the trip I would be alone in my room in their house and he would find me and come sit with me, fill me up, and it turned me on for some reason. It was also my first semi-sexual experience but like he would touch my legs because I think he had a leg fetish or something. Is a leg fetish even a thing? Like I feel like the leg is sexual enough on its own that it's not really a fetish. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's like already in the umbrella of sexual areas on your body. Or maybe there is a thing as a leg fetish. I don't know. I'm thinking about legs. Maybe I have... Anyways, we went home from the trip and I felt grossed out because I don't know why it turned me on, but a couple of months ago he visited our town to see us on his own because he's an adult now and so am I, and he got really ripped over the years so I found him attractive again for some reason, but I decided not to do anything about it. One, because he was my cousin. That alone, that's all the reason you need. Two, because I now have a boyfriend. Ooh! Ooh, this is getting even juicier. So while he was staying, the cool cousins and Dylan and I hung out together every day. And the last day he was staying in town, he told me he still wanted me. And I really wanted him. So we planned to have intercourse. Ah! The next morning, really early before anyone woke up in his car so no one would be sus of us, and we almost did, but another called car pulled up, so we ended up not doing it. But when he comes to visit again, we are going to get a hotel with a jacuzzi and fucking relentlessly for a whole night. Okay, I feel like this is my duty to intervene. You haven't done it yet, okay? Stop, quit while you're ahead. You have not yet fucked your cousin. You know, you've only lightly dabbled in incest. You can stop before it becomes too late. You know what I mean? It's like, just because you've done cocaine doesn't mean you have to deep dive into heroin. You've dabbled, leave it there, leave it there. You have a boyfriend. You are literally planning to cheat on your boy with your cut. No, honey, too much, too much. Cut it out, leave it be. Just watch incest porn and think about your cousin and leave it there. Don't even do that. Why did I tell you to do that? I. Uh... Whenever I go to a new place, hotel, new state, another house, I feel the need to masturbate in the shower because anywhere else would be gross. I have masturbated in four states, eight hotels, and six different houses. Not friends' houses, and sorry for all the LOL. I think this is fine. Like, this is fun. You have a little ritual with yourself, a relaxation ritual, christening, any new location you dare explore. I like it. This is fun. I'll try it out. Every time I go somewhere new, this is literally so long ago and I somehow still feel like it was yesterday. Trauma. When I was in 10th grade, which is the year where we graduate from school, kinda is hard to explain, but it was my last year at the school. All of our parents from the same grade got together to plan out this trip for us to go on so we could enjoy the last moments with our grade. It was going to be out of the country, so we would have to share a hotel room with a few people so it wouldn't get too expensive. I need up sharing a room with this guy. Note that the guy was like the most popular guy in my grade, so I was expecting my room to be filled with people constantly. Fast forward to the first night in the hotel. We were all by the beach nearby our hotel just having some fun before we went to sleep. It was already getting late and I was getting tired so I just decided to dip and go back to my room. I ended up falling asleep and woke up to see my roommate have a girl in his bed with him so I just sighed and went back to sleep. Later on I start to fail my mattress move and heard a few whispers really close to me. I swear to I don't know who but I opened my eyes to see three random people standing around me butt ass naked with one person holding a cucumber. You might get what their plan was. 
what to like rail you unconscious with a cucumber what the f they all got off my bed as fast as they could and started to giggle so loudly i ended up having to share a bed with my best friend in a different room because i was not about to get even more traumatized than i already was i guess i am lucky with not having to go to school with any of these people anymore this is so fucked up there's like bullying and then there's like that's like a they, they were gonna assault you what the Ooh, sometimes I don't even want to say anything fun or funny. Squirrel, there's a squirrel and it's looking at me and it's super cute. I needed that. I needed a little light energy because this is a lot going on. <laughs> sometimes I don't know what to say and I don't want to make a joke because this is their very serious situations and I'm really glad nothing more happened, but... The secret is real and I fucking wish it wasn't. Before coronavid, in a time long gone by, I went on a school ski trip to Italy around Easter time. There was this international show and the hotel actually invited us to it. So the teachers made us go to it and they were very adamant that we stay for the whole show. And after we could just fuck off and do whatever. So it started off pretty normal and there were four actors playing a bunch of characters in a comedy. And there were lots of kids dancing around us in another school. We're just sort of there. But as the show evolved, all the kids gradually left. They started swearing and shit, which isn't too wild. But we were kind of surprised considering it was Mickey Mouse type shit five minutes ago. Then it got to a point where we weren't sure if they were saying slurs or if it was just their accent. All of us spoke English pretty fluently, but it wasn't necessarily our first language, so it was kind of hard to tell. And then it went kind of quiet. And one of the actors came out in a trench coat and you could tell all the girls just got a bad vibe instantly. This man walks up to the group of underage girls and just flashes them. Cock out, balls even. Sorry, it's literally not funny because this is traumatizing, but I feel like if cocks out, balls are inevitably out as well, you know? He runs around the room specifically flashing girls and teachers, and that's when we all fucking booked it out of there. The weeb kids were into it though. Yeah, that's my secret. I did not tell my mother. I wouldn't even know what to say. Can you guys like sue the school because your teachers force you to sit through that? What the fuck? Was that like an organized crime? crime. You know what I mean? Like, did they rehearse it that way or was that improvised? I hope that's not real. I hate people. I don't hate people, but I, I do like a lot of them. One time me and my friend were in a hotel room. We shared with my dad while on a trip and we decided we wanted to get high. My dad was sleeping with a door between us while we were in the living room with a pullout couch. My friend had bought weed she stole from her dad and we went downstairs to the vending machines and got cookie ice cream sandwiches. We got a paper cup and put the cookie part of the ice cream sandwich in and smashed it up with literal clumps of weed. You know that's not how you get high, right? <laughs> you don't just like put weed in food. <laughs> what? We heated it up in the microwave and the hotel room smelled so much like weed. Wait, is that how it works? If you heat it up, is that like baking weed brownie? I don't think it works like that. I think it needs to be like an oil. I don't think you guys know what you're doing. I don't think I do either, but I really don't think you do. Um, and we were like, oh shit, because my dad was like right next to us to only a door separating us. We ate the edibles and it was so gross because we were like eating just clumps of weed with some cookie bits to help it go down. My dad didn't catch us, LOL. I don't even know how. Can I wish you finished the story. Did you realize that you didn't get high because that's not how you're supposed to consume weed? What? Maybe. There's a sliver of chance that I'm wrong, but I've definitely engaged with marijuana more than I should have for a longer period than I should have, and I just don't think that that's right. I don't think that's right. So, uh, better luck next time. Try, I don't know, maybe like do the apple thing where you actually light it. I one time tried a baguette. That was difficult, but it's better than what you did. Why am I giving weed smoking advice? You know what I mean? Like, I want this video to be monetized. <laughs> Don't smoke drugs. No, don't eat drugs. I, I don't just do it right if you're gonna do it. So my dad always spits in cups and stuff. He literally doesn't get up to walk to a trash can or something. And one time when I was six, me and my parents were at a hotel and I seen a cup. I thought it was water, so I drank it. After I drank it, my father told me it was his spit. That wasn't even a fun secret. Like that, I was just upset and disturbed. And you know what else? I'm sorry if you're a spitter, but I think that that's up there in like one of the grossest habits a person can have. When people just like, wherever they go, you're not a dog. You can't just be secreting liquids wherever you so please. I know it's not, you're, you know, but it's still, 
Okay, so this one time, all my friends decided to go to the beach and not invite me. They had no idea I found out they did this and I wanted revenge. So the next week I invited them to my house. When they were over, we went down to a park really near my house. I told them to wait there and ran back up to my house. I grabbed five mini bottles of vodka, like the ones at hotels, and put a small amount of bleach in four of them. I then gave each of them one of the bottles with bleach. They got sick and one of them ended up in the hospital. She's fine now, I have no regrets. You know why you didn't get invited? Because they could probably sense that your ass was fucking crazy and would do some shit like this. You know what I mean? Like, you got left out because they don't want you around, sis. Don't do weird shit like that and maybe people would want you around, okay? Like, it's rude for them to leave you out, okay? But what you did was psychotic. And I'm just saying, like, people can pick up a vibe and maybe consider the vibe you are emitting and the literal poison. Okay, so growing up, my dad gave me really unfair punishments. For example, if I didn't clean my room, he'd make me lick the bottom of his shoe or would ban me from using the toilet and make me use the garden. Jeez, you must be a very interesting person. So one day I'm on a holiday and I started to become a bit rebellious because I was a teenager and came from a strict background. I had recently brought a fake ID and went clubbing that night with random people I met at the hotel. And while I was clubbing and getting drunk, I saw my art teacher. Crazy, right? So while he's scolding me for being underage and drinking, I broke down and told him about my dad being kind of abusive. He gave me his WhatsApp and told me to contact him anytime he was mean. So I went back to my hotel to see my father in my room sitting on my bed and he made me lick the toilet seat. I got upset and was so drunk. I sent my teacher a dick pic because I had sort of fancied him for a whole year. My teacher saw the message and never replied. And then I turned up to school and when it was the new term to see him gone. Later found out he became depressed and quit because his wife saw a dick pic on his phone and he couldn't explain why there was one and they divorced. Low key feel bad. You could probably high key feel bad. Not gonna lie. Um, I know that wasn't your intention, but like, this is all my dad's fault. Take a little bit of responsibility. The teacher said, send me a note if you need some support. And then you sent him a dick pic. So like, it's not totally your dad, but your dad did fuck you up. So like the, the person you have become is probably has a lot to do with your, is it all your dad's fault? This is all we all contemplate in therapy ever is like, is it our, just our parents' fault? I mean, not really. That's not all I contemplate in therapy, but it is an interesting question. Anyways, happy summer days, A-dubs. Happy summer days. They don't sound very happy for you or your ex-art teacher. Alex, please, I need help. So I think my mom is cheating on my dad. And I also saw a bunch of shit I really didn't want to see. She gave me her phone to Google something and I saw a ton of searches for some hella graphic porn that she didn't clear for some fucking reason. Then the very next fucking day, I had to Google something again and I saw a search for syphilis symptoms with pictures. But we had been sharing a hotel room so she was looking at this stuff in the same room as her daughter. Don't you have your own phone? She also has a bunch of these male friends on Facebook and Instagram who she talks to even way more than near my sister or brother. There's more stuff too. Like she goes to the gym three or four times a week, but never brings any gym clothes in a bag like she used to. Or how she has a fake profile that says she uses for work, but it's just photos of this pretty young blonde girl. So I'm assuming it's to catfish. She doesn't sound like the type of person who would do this, but I don't even know anymore. My home life is pretty shit. So I really don't need this right now. Should I blackmail her for a dog or a nose job or something? Maybe I should just Google things on my own phone. So none of this would happen. That's what I'm saying. P.S. I had a Google form that was just like this one to submit the stories to you open, but it was for school. <laughs> Chill. I said this to my teacher by mistake. Please read this to make me getting expelled worth it. <laughs> but you just fucking killed me. <laughs> Hopefully your trauma will be bad enough for your teacher to just feel bad and give you a pass. R.E. your cheating mom. <laughs> I'd say if you're gonna blackmail her, maybe why not try for the dog and a nose job? You know what I mean? Why choose? I feel like you've got a lot of ammo. So get what you deserve, girly. I am traumatized literally forever. Okay, so my family and I went on vacation. We had to stay in a hotel and there was the living room with the couch bed, which is where I was and a room with the bathroom and two beds where my step mom, dad, and sisters were. So my dad went to take a shower and I guess he doesn't get dressed in the bathroom like a normal person would. I hate getting dressed in the bathroom personally. I guess I'm not normal. We all know that. I'm special. 
Anyways, the door separating the living room and their rooms was shut, but my little sister opened it. When he came out, I saw everything. I saw my dad's dingling. I'm not okay. You know what's crazy is that like we become traumatized by seeing our dad's dinglings, but we were like literally in their dinglings. You know what I mean? Like that dingling was your home for like 0.1 second, you know, while you were shooting out. Sorry if that's just made your trauma worse. But you know what I mean? It's like we should see it and be like home. Oh, I remember that. I vacationed there once. Through TikTok, I learned that sometimes people leave money in hotel Bibles. Ever since I learned that, I go through every drawer in the bedroom of the hotel looking for the Bible. Then I flip through the pages to see if there's any money. Well, is there? Guys, I'm fully aware of the terrible lighting happening right now. It's just changing. And this is why using natural light towards the end of the day is a little risky. I took that risk and I failed, but I'm aware of it, right? Does that make it better? Like if I'm self-aware, does that make you enjoy the experience anyways? I don't know, just like, I know, I know. I work at a hotel as a housekeeper. Oh, we get an inside scoop. I only worked here for a couple months and it's my first hotel job. Since I've been here, I've cleaned up shit that someone flung into the tub, piss covered sheets that were left on the floor, no note, so I almost got pee all over myself and the room, fireball smelling vomit after someone entirely missed the toilet, and the list goes on, hotels are pretty gross. I bet, I bet. My first month here, my manager sent me to a room where I found bed bugs. Two weeks later, after the room had been stayed in, I was sent to the room again only to find more bed bugs. After a few weeks ago, again, it had been stayed in and found more bed bugs. They run out of clean sheets in the laundry room all the time. Some days I get stuck with flipping sheets over to reuse them because there's no clean ones available. I'm never staying in hotel room again. Thanks for letting me know. Also, our comforters have not been washed since I've been here. Some are covered in stains, so we just flip them over to the clean side. Another secret, I sit in these hotel rooms and wait until others are vacant. Some days I'll sit on my butt for three hours and get paid to do nothing. I'm literally sitting here at work right now writing all of this, LMAO. Oh, and whenever people leave unopened food or drinks in the fridges, we're allowed to consume them. I've gotten a lot of beers, shots, and seltzers for free, and sometimes drink them on the clock because fuck this place. I always just say thanks for the tip, bottoms up, bitch. And if I gotta hear another couple fucking at noon on a weekday, I'ma scream. And you know those couples are just people cheating on their spouses. And in the middle of the day on a weekday, it's so annoying. These walls are insanely thin and everyone on the floor can hear their bodies slapping together, the bed squeaking, and what almost sounds like a goat in distress. I don't get paid enough for this. Honestly, I... Thank you for your service and also for letting me know to literally never sleep in a hotel room again. What the fuck? I love that you wrote this on the job. It's so good. <laughs> this ain't my secret, but I'm still gonna say it. I started working at a hotel this year and after a few weeks there, I noticed this male coming in with a group of women into the hotel constantly. So one time a woman really well-dressed came up to reception and asked me if I knew what room a man named Andrew was staying in. I called Andrew's room and said there was a woman in the lobby asking for his room number. He asked me if the woman had blonde hair and was pretty. I remember saying, indeed, she's blonde and very beautiful. And he proceeded to say she could go up to his room. At this point, I didn't know Andrew was the frequent man who turns out to buy the husband of the beautiful lady. Screaming and shouting occurred in the third floor. Security was called. Turns out he was having orgies with women every time he came into the hotel and was caught by his wife. I feel like that must be really common for people who work at hotels to see some sus behavior of should be monogamous people. Like this probably is not a rare happening. I don't know why I'm smiling. It's like kind of fun and juicy, but really actually devastating for that woman. The lighting is All right, I'm checking out. See what I did there? Anyways, my stay here was horrible, so.